One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video. Going on guys i um, just want to make a quick video um, i haven't been making too many videos lately because i only want to do that when i um have something i think worth that's worth talking about so i don't kind of overcrowd um you guys or, or give you too much to to go over so basically what i want to talk about today is how to use size and when to use max size so first step um annoying thing is i just recorded an entire video on this and i actually realized i hated how i fucking explained everything so i had to redo it so I'm going to retry this. So basically, um, the way I've approached trading recently, and it's really served me well, is there are two scenarios that I use max size on, right? If I allocate whatever, it doesn't matter, 3,000, 4,000 shares, there are three two scenarios that I'm going to use max size. One is on the broken stock, the non-hot chick of the day, right? Something like HX. HX was not the hot chick of the day. It was broken. You had overhead resistance to short. We had a clear cut plan in the watch list on what we were gonna do. We kind of saw this 325 line. Um, we saw this 340-ish area, which was the support. And then there was like this 360 line, okay? So the way I approach using max size on these stocks is at the open, I'm always gonna have my fantasy orders out, so I'll have my fantasy orders like 320, 340, 360. If one of them hits and confirms, right? Like if all three of them hit, good, fine. I get all three of my starters in and then I'll react if this line reacts. If the first one hits on one bullet, I'm gonna wait for it to reject and then I'm gonna get in full size risking that line. That is how I've always done it and it's worked really well for me on the broken stocks. So for example, um, basically like for this one right here, right? So my line was 325. If I have my feeler out there at 325, right? Starter hits immediate rejection. Um, and this little push into VWAP here on volume, and it's not going anywhere. I would be using my full size, right? And this is how I've gotten to grow my PNLs because I'll use full size with wicked tight risk. Cause I just don't want to see it break this line. Cause I think that's obvious. If it breaks that line, that line's not confirmed to me anymore. Um, so I usually set my stop right over that line, a couple cents, some wiggle room, whatever. Um, and usually that has led to these quick little washes off VWAP, right? These are what I think MIC is kind of famous for now is these broken stocks, these quick nail and bail trades, but you make 20, 30, 40 cents on a broken stock. Um, so the thing is now on the broken names where people get into trouble the most is that second attempt. The first attempt's always easy, in my opinion, because you, you get a, a good feel of it. Uh, but this is the thing. After the first attempt on a broken stock, I automatically pretend that trade never happened, and I go approach it um, the next bounces like it's a brand new trade. So then what do I do? I look at my lines again, and I reevaluate. I say, does this line look, look realistic? Um, probably not, so I kind of take it out. So now I'm using VWAP as a line. So now I'm using this line right here, this line, which was confirmed, and the one above it, just in case. Because I know in this market, what's happened with these broken stocks is they always can bounce a little further than you think. So I play it like that. So I let it kind of come, I'll set my fantasy orders again. Let them kind of go. You'll see it on all my charts, the same shit. I'll order here, order here, order here. If the line confirms, I'm gonna get in with a quick, I like what Amon does and I've kind of tried to adapt it where if this line confirms, I'm gonna hit it quick because it's a, again, this stock is broken. I don't, for me, I'm gonna use full size above VWAP. If it's broken and it confirms a line, I will use full size above VWAP because the fact is you have to get some full size trades on. If all of your trades are small size, it just takes one trade to wipe you out. So you gotta use full size in the best moments. If you watch Austin's webinar on sizing, he talks about that. You have to get some full size trades. If it's a scalp, you just want to boom, quick and easy, right? Tight risk, boom. Just like something like this, where Ahmed, if he hits his orders, I saw him do it today. Boom, 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 confirms, he hits his size and goes in there, right? Gotta be a little reactive. It's not, there's no science to it. It is kind of an art form and that's something that comes over time. Um, with something like this, this is a great example. 
you short your 30% size at your bound at your line. If so, real quick, there is nothing wrong in my opinion with shorting like on this bounce to VWAP. You want to short full size, fine, but you have to stop out when it reclaims, no matter what. I do. I've done it. I short VWAP right here, and then boom, you get that. You need to be fast. You need to be comfortable doing that. I th I really love how Amin does that. He'll short big, but just boom. I mean, I've seen it. It's like short, stop. Right, because you know VWAP could reject, right? Like this little wick might have got me. I might have thrown on some size there and just said, waited for this line down here for another 15, 20 cents. But you got to be quick. But the way I like to do it is I, I really like adding full size into uh, weakness um, and not, not shorting weakness in the wrong way, but I talked about in my last video about kind of going with the water, right? So for example, if you had your starters and you got your size up here, when this 340 line kind of rejected, and stalled, right? This push down now has the, the weight of the move is going down. That's where I like to slam in the rest of my size because you know, um, again, and I only use size when there's range. And what's that? There's range down to three. You're at the 320s. There's 20 cents, which is my minimum. Boom, right? And to be honest, at that point, you're at 1030, you're at zombie times, you're done. Okay, so the broken stocks are my favorite to use. Um, to use max size because I'm comfortable using it above VWAP because the overhead is there. It hasn't broken pre-market highs. Um, I know that the odds are kind of in my favor. Uh, and if I want to use max size near VWAP, I can. I just need to be kind of quick with my stops. Uh, PPSI. Now let's go over a stock that is not warranted max size. Okay. The only second option that I will use max size on, the first one is broken stocks on day one. Um, so there's three actually. Day, the second option is low hanging fruits. If it's a good low hanging fruit, I usually will actually double my max size um, because I'm so confident that in the lines that are drawn, um, and I'll kind of trade them the same way I do broken stocks on day one. Uh, I'll add to the kind of like that that downward moment momentum. Um, like for example, let me look up. Um, Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. A stock and how I actually play it before I get into this one. Lizzie is a good one, I believe. Yes. Okay, so Lizzie was a good low hanging fruit today because it ran all day. It ran like crazy. What does go fuck yourself? It ran like crazy, right? Gave us a bunch of overhead. So we know this is backside of the move. Not only is it a good backside trade, there's also other hot chicks in play, right? Simple as that. So, how I do it on low hangers. Um, is basically we had our lines like 450, uh, something like that, 450, 440, and so on. So at the open, right, you had this big push to your 440 line, and boom. Would have hopefully had some starters out there um, and gotten filled, whatever. How I play it on this is I wait for, now that it's confirmed at this level, Oops, did I just have a seizure or something? Now that it's confirmed at that level, VWAP is going to be kind of my, my guide. Um, I like to see it uh, break hard below VWAP. I don't know why my VWAPs keep showing these bands. I don't use these bands at all. I just forgot to take them off. Okay. So I use VWAP as my guide. So when it's broken, I'll start to scale um, bigger size. But as soon as we kind of get under VWAP here and confirm, I usually like to put on my bigger size. And I know on low hanging fruits, I'm just going to kind of widen my risk because I think the odds are there. And they usually end up panning out something like, sorry, this thing is stupid, like this. Nice and stress-free, right? You can use VWAP as your guide. I can use big size and um, comfortably just know that I'm risking VWAP at this point and look at how they usually tend to just fade. That's a lot of low hanging fruits. I like to stay small while it's above uh, and then kind of as it goes in my favor, that's when I start to use full size and you know, I'll say I'm either going to risk VWAP or the top of the previous line as you guys know I sometimes do. 
So that's how I do it on low-hanging fruits. Now, times you should not be using full size. Let me see what's going on. My phone's blowing up here. My girlfriend broke her friend's finger. I don't care. Oh, God, dude. Jesus. So exhausting. Okay. Um, times to not use max size. When a stock is labeled the hot check of the day, until it loses that title, you don't use, you don't use less than max size, right? Um, and why is that? Because if you are using max size on the hot check, you are risking a crazy volume burst. You are risking your entire account, in my opinion. On these hot chicks, you can use 30% size max until one of two situations. You get a massive stuff move, death candle, kiss of death, or uh, it is a waterfall candle like this one, which is not to me isn't like a kiss of death, but it's a big waterfall candle through VWAP, right? Those used to be kind of my bread and butters. Um, and though I'll show you how I used to play those when I used to stick around longer. Um, but basically this is why. So in the mornings, right? This is the, this is the problem. When a stock is a hot chick and has the volume, no matter what, to me, when a stock breaks pre-market highs, which was right here, it becomes the hot chick. It's done, it's the hot chick. I don't care what happens after that. I'm 30% only until we get a stuff move, a death candle, anything, right? Um, and, I'll, and I'll tell explain why. So my, everyone knows for, for me, if you watch my videos, my 30% size, I'm willing to let it pretty much work until the trade is wrong. Um, which means I'm usually comfortable risking like 30 to 40 cents on my 30% size because it's a manageable loss and it allows me to stay fluid like fluid in the stock and not panic. Um, so this stock is a great example. It broke pre-market highs. I don't care if it came down, whatever. Um, if you're a new trader, you have to stop out on the break. No matter what, no questions asked. I don't want to hear, but, 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 is chart run farmer, farmer, I don't care. I don't give a fuck, shut the fuck up. You stop out on the break of pre-market highs. You set your heart stop there, I don't care. You are going to see sometimes going to come up, come down like this. But you know what? There's a million times where I've done this. I've waited. I said, hmm, it did this. I said, let me see. And the next thing I know, it's at fucking six. And I'm dead. And you guys can't revive me because I'm dead. So that's that. Stop out. As soon as the stock breaks pre-market highs, to me, it not, no longer warrants full size until I get the death candle. Um, so now. This is a good example because it went up here. It's now the hot chick. It came down. This is where the volume and the attention still was. You could be shorting your 30% size in here, risking high of day or risking the top of the last kind of candle. You had that 25 candle, whatever. Um, and you would keep your risk in check 100%. Your risk would be completely in check. You'd be scaling this bounce to, to here, hopefully an average in here, risking you know, 20, 25 cents. And that's fine, I think, on 30% size. That would allow you to stay, like, so I hope that helps. Um, reach out if you need any help at all with sizing. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.